In today's world, you can accumulate a lot of files that you want to have backed up and never lose. And many times it adds up to quite a bit of storage. An online backup is the most convenient and redundant way to store your data to make sure it's never lost. But it can get pretty expensive when you have a large amount of data, especially into the terabyte range. But today I'm going to show you how you can back up a terabyte of data for just a little bit over a dollar a month. So the key to this is being able to break into using the Amazon AWS cloud backup system. Amazon AWS is what some of those backup sites use, but then they charge you additional fees on top of that because they got to make a little cheddar themselves. And in many cases, if you work for a big company, Amazon AWS is what they use to back up their terabytes of data as well. So from a personal use standpoint, the key is how do I break into being able to back up to the Amazon AWS system? So anybody could sign up from an Amazon AWS account. Just proceed to aws.amazon.com and go ahead and register an account. Once you have an account, you have access to a plethora of tools and storage accounts where you can put your data into these different buckets where it's stored backed up on a number of their servers around the world. You of course have a primary server where you upload to and then Amazon has redundancy where it backs up their data as well. And of course you have access to the highest level of encryption to push your data there. Case in point, this is used by enterprise level corporations around the world. Now the next piece is what are you gonna actually use to get your data pushed up and stored under the Amazon AWS? And in that case, we're gonna use a software called Cloudberry Backup. Now Cloudberry Backup was purchased by MSP360 a number of years ago, but they still offer the software under the Cloudberry brand and name. And you just gotta make sure you're selecting on that specifically. MSP360 also hosts a online backup solution. Uh, again, it's meant for enterprise level, but you can still have access to the Cloudberry desktop application, which is ideal for personal use. Browse out to msp360.com, which I'll drop that link down below. And from there, we're going to go to standalone products and we're going to go to Cloudberry backup. You can see under here, the offering is you can do a free trial for 15 days, which is excellent. You can try it out, see how you like it. Now, Cloudberry Backup Desktop does have some feature limitations you should be aware of. Right down here, it says five terabyte storage in the pro version. So if you have more than five terabytes of storage, you will need to do separate buckets and have separate backups, uh, but five terabytes per bucket. That's kind of how Amazon AWS uh, does it. Think of it as like zipping your files up, almost like a zip file. Your files are stored in these things called buckets. It's encrypted data. You encrypt it before you push it up. And yeah, you have a five terabyte storage limit per bucket on the pro or purchase version. And once you download and run the executable and install it, once the install is finished, you'll be presented with this screen. You can see we have a number of options here. To get started, I would just recommend using the start the free trial. You're going to need to register an email account with them and go ahead and do that. And you can start the free trial of Cloudberry Desktop. Once the installation is all done, you'll be presented with a screen like this. And it's a pretty simple user interface. Here's your backup plans where you're going to back up and say, hey, I want to back up this directory or this uh, external storage drive, something of that nature. A restore plan is uh, basically whenever you're going to restore information from your bucket or backup. Backup storage is where you can actually see the backups that you have there. And you can see I have some right here. And then under the history page, you can see the history of your backup. So most likely people were doing backups at night. You can go to the history page to see how that backup ran. Now, one of the first things you're going to need to do with a fresh install is you're going to need to go up to this drop down up here and add a storage account. Basically, you need to link this software to your Amazon AWS account. Of course, we'll hit add storage account here. And then you have a number of options. You can actually back up uh, to Google and some other uh, providers here as well. But we're going to go into the Amazon AWS. And then in your display name, you can call this whatever you want. I'll just put my last name there. And then you can see you have some options here as well. Most likely in the United States, at least in other countries, you probably just select Amazon S3. Now to make the connection, we're going to need an access key and a secret key, which we're going to need to go into our Amazon AWS console to get those numbers. So back under our Amazon AWS console, we're going to go up to services here. And on the right here, we're going to look for this IAM, this manage access AWS resources. And this is basically where you set up the usernames to allow for a user, new username to connect to your console. And that's that username is what it's going to use to upload the information. So under here, we're going to go to users. And then on the right hand side, we're going to go hit hit add user. Under the screen, you're going to give it a username, and then we're going to go and select the access key, programmatic access. Basically, it's not a human interface access. It's an access for a piece of software. You can see here, we're going to get an access key and a secret access key uh, to access the Amazon AWS. We're going to give that administrator permission. Uh, you can go to different levels of this, but for the basics, just give it administrator. Under this screen, you can see the added tags is optional, so we're going to skip that. And this is just a review screen, so we'll hit uh, create user. Now, once you're done with that, you will see an access key and the secret key. So you can hit show on that and see that information. Those are the two pieces of information we're going to need. I would highly recommend to download this. You can also just go back into your root access account and make a new user if you forget this. But once this, you kind of come off of this screen, you're not going to be able to see these again. So if you click this download CSV file and you know print that out or store that away somewhere at your house, that will be this uh, access key and secret key. From here, I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go under my access key here, paste that in. And then you can see here is my secret key. So if I select that, I can hit control, hold down control and hit C to copy it. And I can paste my secret key into there. Now, once I have those two things pasted, I can hit this drop down under here and you can see I have a bucket already. But I'm gonna go ahead and create a new bucket and then you can name this whatever you want. Again, think of this as a zip file. It's just like kind of where everything, we're gonna push everything. You're gonna store things in buckets. Uh, think of it maybe as like a floppy drive or a CD. It's gonna be where you back the data up onto uh, and you can have as many buckets as you want. You can see here, you can choose uh, whichever server, you know, most likely you're probably gonna to choose the server that's closest to your location. And then these are backed up. You know, Amazon takes care of backing those up at different locations all in their own. After you have your bucket name specified and all created, just go ahead and hit OK. Now that we have the software connected to our Amazon account, you can see that that's shown there. We can just hit close and now we're ready to create a backup. To create a backup for the first time, we're just going to click files right here. And then I'm presented with this wizard. We're going to go ahead and hit next. We're going to select that uh, storage account, which we're using, which uh, if you click on this button here and hit edit, it takes you back to that exact screen we were in before. Uh, so hit next. This is just the name of the backup plan. So maybe nightly. 
And then from here, you can get into all kinds of different options. Notice the question marks you have here, but most of the defaults are in good shape. Uh, you, like all these defaults, I would say are, are good to go, but you can read through those on your own. From here, you just go in and select whatever you want to back up. So in that case, you may want to browse down to your user or wherever you have your file stored. I think in this example, I'm just gonna go down and into my user drive where I might have photos and video stuff and just select those folders. And this, uh, you just have some other options here as well. I would just recommend accepting the defaults. Here you can go and do your encryption. You can see you can go up to AES-256 encryption. So this is where you'd put in some passwords. Highly recommend doing that, but I highly recommend that you never forget those passwords or you ain't gonna get your data back. So just, you know, encryption's there, it's good. This encrypts it prior to pushing it through the internet. Definitely recommend doing it, but definitely make it sure it's a password you're not gonna forget. The other option here is in not encrypting it locally first before pushing it, but you can encrypt it on the server side. Um, you can check that out as well. The key right here is this part to have the savings, the cost savings of using this method with the Amazon AWS is you have to go down and select this uh, storage class and change this to Glacier Deep Archive. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about the different storage classes, click this option or hover over this uh, information box over here on the right-hand side. Basically, the Deep Glacier, the one that you're going to you know, spend the least amount on, is where you're really storing data and you're not going to need it. It's basically a back, a true backup where a you know, server dies or a drive goes bad and something that or your house God forbid your house burns down or something of that nature. And um, you're, you're kind of putting the data there. You don't need instant access to it at any given time that you can, can anticipate. And that's where you're gonna get the best bang for your buck, where you're gonna get terabytes of storage data for only a couple dollars a month. If you do want more instant access to a certain amount of data, well, you just create a different backup plan, select that data, and then maybe use standard or other, you know, some other options up here where you have a little bit more quick access to that information. With the Glacier Deep Archive method, you're gonna be able to see your data, but if you go to retrieve it, it may take some time. It may take a four to six hour window before it goes and retrieves that. It kind of puts it in a restoration plan and then it will just process us. And then uh, once it, the server's free on Amazon side, it'll actually pull that data and start to push it to you for download. So that's perfect for me. I don't necessarily need access to the data. A lot of the stuff that's stuff I can never want to lose is a lot of family photos and videos and things of that nature. I just want to make sure it's backed up double, triple redundancy and that God forbid any catastrophic thing happens to the house that we still have all that information and data. You can see here, you can get a little bit of a warning um, when you're picking that option for the long-term retrieval of that. It's, it's not instantaneously available, but some of the other higher options it is, uh, but you're, you're not, you're going to pay a little bit more uh, per terabyte. This next one, we're gonna set the default of uh, consistency checks. And then finally, we're gonna set this on a schedule. So we're gonna set this to reoccurring maybe every day. The final options here are purging data. So as you make updates to the file, it will actually keep redundant copies of the data. How long do you wanna keep that uh, data on hand? Uh, we'll purge it out every year, six months, things of that nature. If you make, again, updates to the files, or if you even delete files from a directory on your computer, you would still be able to go get those backups. You know, we'll do a nightly backup, uh, but it's not gonna actually delete the file in your backup uh, for whatever duration of time that you set. So if you set this to a year, it would be a year after you deleted that before it actually deletes it on your backup. The top option, the default option is it never deletes it. So if you back everything up, wipe your entire drive manually, delete it, it's still, and it does the nightly backup, it's still not gonna delete the stuff on the server. Uh, here you can set it for a year, some time intervals, things of that nature. You can run some pre and post uh, scripts, something that probably won't need to do. And then you can also uh, have it email you in the case of a backup failure, or if there's any results other than good results, I can generate port reports, things of that nature. Of course, you don't need to do that either. I can just turn that off for now. Uh, and at that point, you can hit next and you're done. And then finally, you're done, done. You can either hit finished or check this box if you'd like to run it right away. And uh, yeah, you're set and ready to go. So now if we go back up into the backup plan, you can see it's right here. You can go into it right here anytime and edit it. So if we go into that edit, it just kicks us right back into that exact same wizard. So you can see right here, um, you can restore it, file it, blah, blah, blah. You can come up to here and hit it run, run backup, force full backup. So it's gonna do kind of an incremental, but you can run it, force it a full backup. Now, if you want to make another backup plan, you go simply up here to the top. You can see you have file backup or legacy. We're going to always do the modern. So file backup plan again. And then again, that's going to pop you into that wizard. Uh, you can select your storage, which would be the same bucket. You can put multiple backup plans, multiple directories and drives and whatever you select in the next screen uh, into that same bucket. Or you can make different buckets if you'd like to as well. It really doesn't matter. At any given point in time, if you want to look at your data, uh, you can go into this backup storage. I didn't actually back it up yet, but you'll see the, the nightly backup here. And then you see your drive letters list out and all the files that you would have stored in here. Of course, you can go into the Amazon AWS console and we're gonna click on this S3 storage here. And then you'll see your different buckets that are listed here. I didn't put into anything in the UAV tech, but if I go into the other bucket I have here, you can see uh, it just has some drive names and then I can go back into my file storage name and folder all the stuff's in. I'm basically backing up a drive and you can see all my files here. Uh, and all the directories and whatnot. And I can go into here anytime and check out that, make sure everything's there. And I can also go into actions and uh, do some other things, copy, move. I really wouldn't recommend messing around with it. You really don't need to goof around with it in this online interface. The best interface to use is here in the Cloudberry. So I just did a couple quick backup files and you can see what I presented with. Here's your nightly backup. Here's the date and time it's backed up. I click into that, then I can see my C drive, browse down, and just went and grabbed and just uploaded a couple little 
files here, I can always right click on the hit and hit restore data. And at any given point that will generate a restore plan that I can restore once or do it at a certain date and time. And then just go ahead and hit next and it will and uh, set that restore plan. So we'll see here, select the restore point. Um, I'm gonna restore that file. So there's gonna be multiple restore points based on how many versions of the file that you might have backed up. Uh, you can pick whichever you want. And uh, you can always hit here the latest version, hit next. And then uh, yeah, they will go ahead and make that restore plan, restore to the original location, restore to a location that you somewhere else you wanted on the computer. Uh, just hit that and just go ahead and select these uh, defaults. And uh, then again, it can email you once that file has been restored, hit next, finished, and it will go and then generate this restore plan. You'll see this restore plan. Um, in this case, it seems like it's gonna happen. Yeah, this one happened, yeah. So this one seemed to happen uh, right away. In some cases, you might have to wait a little bit. This one's basically saying, hey, you restored it to the file and it's already there, so it kind of just aired out. But obviously, if I restored it to another location or to, and the file wasn't on the, or the original location, then it would have uh, worked and restored that information. So hopefully that was helpful. Check it out. I've been using this solution for years. Uh, it's a great solution where you have a lot of data that you want to back up, but you don't want to pay lots of money. And especially in scenarios where you don't really need access to the data all that much, uh, as long as my file drives stay active and working as I intend them to be, uh, I don't need to be going on the cloud storage to grab pictures, you know, of my kids or things of that nature or videos uh, for my hobby and things like that. I really just need access to the data in a catastrophic failure where the drives go out or something happens at the house. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop them down below. Thanks everybody. I hope this helps.